Good morning. My name is Paul Elio, and I'd like to talk to you today about my big idea. So can you have disruptive technology without new technology? This is the trunk that my uh, grandfather immigrated from Italy to America with. It sits in the entryway of my house. So heavy luggage, and that was 1912. So heavy luggage has been around for a very long time. Wheels even longer. But it wasn't until the mid 80s that somebody went, you know, if we put wheels on the corner of these large heavy rectangles, it sure would be convenient, <laughs> right? <laughs> and all of our backs are the better for it. Elio Motors. So at highway speeds, most of your fuel goes to moving air. By sending two people front to back instead of side by side, we move half as much air and we get double the mileage at 84 miles per gallon. No new technology, but disruptive technology. Can you disrupt an industry without affecting the current players? The Sony Walkman. It was a radio, but it was unique and different enough that people just bought it. They didn't stop buying home stereos. They didn't stop buying car stereos. They bought a Walkman. It was personal music. Elio Motors. We buy big vehicles for a reason. They, they serve a purpose in our lives. And then we get stuck driving those vehicles back and forth to work all by ourselves. And at $6,800 and 84 miles per gallon, this can be an and vehicle. It's personal transportation. <clears throat> Why is it hard to do a big idea inside a large organization? If the big idea is successful, the credit gets distributed amongst hundreds of players, as it should. It takes a lot of folks to make a big idea happen. But if it fails, we want to pin it on somebody. So we find the, the one or the few who got that whole mess started, right? And so you're not incented to take on big ideas in a big organization, even though you have the access to capital and the infrastructure because of the risk-reward scenario, right? If you succeed, it's a little bit of, of success. If you fail, it's a huge failure. What about innovating as an entrepreneur or in a small organization? Access to capital has been the biggest issue. And that's beginning to change with the power of the crowd. Recently, rewards crowdfunding has become popular, uh, championed by sites like Indiegogo and Kickstarters. And it's been fundamental to our success. We are one of the most successful rewards crowdfunding projects ever. We've raised over $19.5 million from 46,000 reservationists, and it accounts for over $300 million of product reserved. And as important as the capital has been to our success, the proving of our business plan is probably even more important. With 46,000 people who are willing to put money down on our product, it makes all the stakeholders more comfortable, whether you're talking to government, suppliers, investors, or internal folks. There's also a new style of, of crowdfunding that just became available in June. It's called uh, Equity Crowdfunding or Reg A+. Plus. So the SEC is allowing you to sell stock to non-accredited investors for the first time. So on June 19th, you could do what they called test the waters and say, hey, we're thinking about doing a Reg A plus offering. If we do, would you be interested? And if you're interested, what do you think you would invest? Since June 19th, we've taken $39 million in non-binding reservations to raise 25. We've made our application to the SEC, and upon approval, then we'll go back and talk to those folks and say, okay, do, do you want to do this or not? That capital is the key to our success. I think it puts us over the hump. So what qualifies as a big idea? You have to be profitable, right? If you're not profitable, you're not going to be around long enough to make any difference. But it's more than just profitable. I think you need to make a difference to our culture, our society to people. So does Elio qualify as a big idea? Jobs, American jobs, we all know they're important. Elio can create 21,000 new American jobs in the next year, year and a half between direct and indirect. And as powerful as that is, I think the impact of the project's even greater. Just like Roger Bannister didn't get the memo that the human body can't, couldn't run the uh, mile in under four minutes, so he went ahead and did it. <laughs> Elio Motors didn't get the memo that you can't build a low-cost, high-mileage, high-quality vehicle in this country with substantially all North American content. So we're going to go ahead and do it. And, uh, and I think other entrepreneurs will follow us. The environment. 
Because of our price point, we can put a tremendous number of Elios on the road. After five years of sales, we can reduce total U.S. gas consumption by nearly a half a percent. That is a significant number. I'm not aware of any other project that can have that kind of impact in that time frame. Clunkers. There's a lot of folks driving, driving unreliable and unsafe vehicles because they don't have a choice. Elio is going to have a program called Let Your Gas Savings Make Your Payments. And the way it works is you walk into our showroom, sign your name, we give you a brand new vehicle and a credit card with a $300 limit on it, and we let you walk back out the door. Now the deal is you have to charge all your fuel with that credit card. And every time you buy gas, we're going to charge you triple. So if you buy $10 worth of gas, it shows up as a $30 charge on your credit card statement. And that $20 extra goes to paying down your loan. It's your, your car payment. Now, as long as you drove in the dealership in something that gets 27 miles to the gallon or less, and all those clunkers do, your monthly fuel bill goes down, right? Three times 27 is 81, and we get 84. So from the consumer's perspective, they have a brand new vehicle, under warranty, fun to drive, they don't have a car payment, and they are guaranteed to spend less on gas next month, a triple amount than they did last month on their clunker. We can literally give cars away to the clunker drivers. <clears throat> but what if you go down another level in our economic system, the folks who are really struggling? There's a study in New Jersey that says something like 60% of their chronically unemployed have had to turn down jobs because they had no way to get to the job. A Harvard economist just came out with a study that said the number one predictor on whether you get out of poverty or not is mobility. It correlates better than crime rate in your community, test scores in your grade schools, or the number of two family households in your community. The number one correlator is mobility. And with the let gas savings make your payments, people can afford a car to get to their job. So for all these reasons, I think Elio qualifies as a big idea. And I hope that you can take some of the things that have helped us be successful and go do something big. Thank you.